Alright, so if you have a, a normal uh, civilian Crown Vic 2003, I think this still applies to other years too, as long as you match same year, same year. I assume I would check on Crown Vic Net just to make sure. Convict.net. But this car is a is a, a civilian sport. This is a sport. See how you have the leather bucket seats and the shifter. Shifter there. On the ground. Leather bucket seats. And that crap up there. LEDs. Don't look at my radio. That's a work in progress. Yeah, never mind. I put that in three years ago. <laughs> anyway. So... Um, I basically blew out my ECM being stupid with a blown out plug through the, through the ignition coil on top of the top of the engine. I have no clue why and started driving home because I was going to fix the plug when I got home and I fried my ECM. So anyway, the ECM lost the, I don't know if it's fried or whatever, but it lost the patch codes for the keys and um they wanted to charge about 150 to reprogram a key which is just so stupid with my own keys so i went on ebay and well, i did some research first and i found a pi ecm and supposedly for the 2003 the phd zero is the preferred one i don't know why that is but um one of the dudes in the forum said this is the preferred one for shifting and all that. And I think the other ones are EMT 0 through 4. Something like that number, but the preferred one was the PHD 0. So I went on eBay. I saw one of these on eBay for 60 bucks. 60 bucks beats 150 for a key, etc. And my ECM might have been fried. So the PI ECM will work in a civilian car, no problem. Um, I don't know if I have no problems because my gear ratio is the same as a, as a PI being it's a, a, a sport, but whatever. But the only difference it does, is it shifts at a higher RPM, which is preferred. Who wants that old crap? Um, when you're in park, I believe instead of idling at 500, it, it idles at 800. Um, what is the other thing? Shoot. Uh, I forgot. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So anyway, to get this, your old ECM out and this one in, you must go under here. Well, all right, hold on. Let's, let's start from inside the engine. You must. That is the back of your ECM right there. You must unbolt that. You unbolt that way and this is the harness. And you unbolt that, and then you go into the car. Of course, you want all this stuff removed, and mine's still removed, because I never bother putting it back in yet, because I plan on pulling my dash uh, to redo the lights, because I have a bunch of blown lights, and uh, then I can finish installing that radio. So anyway, the ECM is right there. See, I have a second. I have a backup PhD. Sorry, a backup PhD zero. <laughs> I found another one on eBay for like eighty bucks or something or seventy. So I bought a backup one. So it's here. Um, I forgot how it's done. Do you undo these brackets or something? Uh, I think it's clamped on there somehow, or maybe the bolt. Once you unbolt it, it just pulls out. Sorry, that pulls out, but. Oh yeah, it eliminates the pats. That was the other thing I was trying to think of. It eliminates needing to program keys because the interceptor doesn't do that system. And it also makes your security light not work anymore. Um, I think, I think that that'll st that stops blinking. Or maybe it does blink, I don't know. Um, and once you do that, once you put the PI ECM in this car, you're not going to be able to start the car because the PI has um, the PI has a, a wire bypass. Um, I that up. Has a 
has a wire bypass that um, lets the starter, that shorts out the starter relay, which is this one right here. So, and the civilian one, the ECM shorts that out um, when the PATS comes up to a good key. So the way you bypass that, let's put on, I gotta use another flash. The way you bypass that is you have to take a wire, let's get my better flashlight. Take a wire from the negative side of the terminal and go into that terminal of the relay. You pull out that relay, you just make like an L or a U on the wire and just hook it up to that relay and push it back into the socket. I'm not gonna pull it out because they're painting ass to pull out and you start to break the relay and I don't wanna crack that relay. That'll make it corrode. So anyway, you're just putting this wire straight down and when you pull out this relay, make a U with the wire. You know, you expose the wire, put it onto that, that terminal that's on this side of the relay and just shove it back in there. And then you just connect the other wire right up to there. A little bit of corrosion going on. And that way you now have a ground to this relay. And when you turn the key, your, your engine will crank over. And um, then you'll be good. Let's put this back in. And you know, you could do something to not, not crunch that cable. I mean, you could, I should probably make a, I should probably make a slot right there so it doesn't crunch on this wire. But I don't feel like doing it, it's in there. It's okay, it's moving, it's okay. And that's how you open this, is that lid there, click that open. Um, I still have some remnants of the chipmunk that lost its battle on my belt and got slammed into there. That was cool. That was a cool discovery, bro. I'll tell you what. Let me get back over here. Here's my air suspension, the air pump. That's a new one. Replace that one. Uh, that's a Suncor. Can you see that? I should have done a video on that. That's a Suncor. That was the cheaper one. Works perfectly fine. Uh, and there's my replacement. That condenser rotted out at the bottom. So I just bought another one on Amazon. Evacuated the AC. Filled it back up. Good to go, buddy. And that replaced a couple years ago. That thing just bent for no reason. Just bent and started hitting. Let me see it. I started hitting the, the side of the engine. <laughs> that was annoying. Uh, that's the original alternator. Um, this upper intake is a replaced intake. I had to get it done in a day, so I couldn't get the PI one. Uh, yes, it's a Dorman. I haven't noticed anything different. Those are all the original injectors. I didn't have to change any rings or anything. Um, I've blown three plugs on this car. Uh, as you see, those are the cheap Chinese coils. I replaced all the coils with the cheap Chinese ones off Amazon, $50 for eight. No issues yet. I kept all my originals because I didn't really have anything wrong with the originals. So I just went and swapped them anyway. Um, yeah, that's intake. I don't know why they have this on here. The dust shield is probably actually a, a restriction. But it's because I have an AFE that pff, doesn't do oil cleaning, so I put that on there. Um, I think that's all. Otherwise, this, this engine has 220,000 on it. Uh, you know, I'm not leaking oil. But I did have the rear main seal replaced when I had the transmission rebuilt. Um... Uh, you know, no oil. Everything looks pretty good. Uh, there's no, no, no gas leaks. Um, I did have this, the steering knuckle. Uh, someone parked my car with the steering wheels still turned, and <laughs> it became a nightmare trying to steer the car. 
Um, so I started lubing those up. I lubed them, um, lubed them and lubed them for a couple weeks, and uh, the steering wheel knuckle loosened back up again. I used um, that looks like lithium in, in there, but I didn't. I used um, I forget what the hell it was. It was the more expensive lube that uh, you spray it and it hardens up, not lithium. Why is this touching? All right. Um, and it worked. I haven't had an issue with the steering anymore. Where if you had taken that to a shop, they would have replaced the steering knuckles. When you didn't need to. Did not need to. What's that? Why is that wet down there? Anyway. Um, so, yeah. And then you need to um, put the new one in, shove it in there, and screw that back on. And you should be good to go. Alrighty then.